One of the big things that we've had other guests on the podcast talk about the pension problem in the state of Illinois, and it's not so much um, the, it, it, it was basically like making promises for the future, which was how they bargained for things, which then ended up making Illinois, you know, a slave to the amount of debt that was mounting. What is it that people should understand about how the pension situation has crippled the state of Illinois? Mm. You know, it's, it's a complex discussion. You know, most of the time when you talk about pensions, people's eyes glaze over because it's, you know, it's just boring. It's a, you know, it's retirement stuff. But, um, you know, it, 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 at, the, at the root of it is, is it, we got so many promises our government has made. And we'll come back to that as to how you, how you get there. It, you, you got a government that makes so many promises to, to the public sector, which is the same public sector that's then, as I mentioned, uh, the control of, of government, the, the union's support the government, the government supports the unions. So you got this great back scratching going on in Illinois that maybe is maybe you find similar uh, competition for that kind of behavior in New Jersey or maybe Louisiana or something. But it's it's a you know it's a really it's a legally corrupt system. Everything that's done is legal and is highly corrupt. Um, and so what's happened is, is you've got this massive amount of debts and it's they have destroyed I, I would argue they have destroyed uh, the future of Illinois. Uh, there's very little time to figure out how to get around all this debt that we have. And what that means is that, you know, think about it, when you have debt, somebody's got to pay it off. Um, assuming that there's no, we can talk about the federal bailouts and all that, but assuming there's no federal bailout, then it's the ordinary, ordinary people of Illinois who are on the hook for paying it back. Um, the, 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 the problem is the debt's gotten so large and we've, we've made the argument at wire points there's no way to fix Illinois without cutting that debt, either through either through bankruptcy or through some kind of reforms and negotiation with the unions or through some legal mechanism to cut those debts because it's so much that to try to make people pay it off, unless you build a wall around Illinois, people will just continue to leave. And how much time, is it? When you say it's so much, help oh, me understand sure. that. Put it in perspective. Yeah, so so okay, there's Moody's Moody's rating agency, everybody knows who that is. You know, they they rate Illinois. Um there's um, they add up all the pension debt. They, they, there's official numbers, right? The state puts out official numbers. Nobody believes them. They're, they're too low. Moody's does its own calculation. And when you add up all the pension debts and retiree health insurance debts, which pensioners get, and you add them up for Chicago, for Cook County, for you know all every local gov- government in, in the city, in the state, and the state level, it's about 420 billion dollars. Now that's a big number, but it means nothing. Um, Four hundred twenty billion dollars is about ninety thousand dollars a household. So imagine that you're living in in Missouri and you're thinking about moving to Illinois. Well, if you move in, you're going to assume, in some way, ninety thousand dollars of additional taxes to pay down not for not for current services, not for better roads, not for not for your schools. It's to pay down simply the old pension debt for services all for services already rendered. So it's ninety thousand dollars a household. Well, think about that. That's, that's a massive number. Um, and you know, the number is actually worse than that. Why? Because you know, at least a quarter of the population is in poverty. So they'll never pay into that, into that $420 billion. So that means as people like me and others who have means, they'll have to pay it. So that number, what is it, 150,000, 200,000 per household? People just won't pay it, not to a corrupt government, that won't fix things, and that the numbers only grow. The, the numbers only grow every every year. The debts are billions more than the year before, and yet the state says we always have balanced budgets. It's never true. Um, so, so you know the way this plays out is is that it's so much debt that people just flee it, and when people flee, it's the same amount of debt on fewer people, and so the number spirals up until. You know, I don't know. Do we do we have to hit a Detroit? Do we have to hit a, a Puerto Rico where so many people leave and then the debt's so onerous that nobody can pay it? Yeah, I mean, one of the you know, you and I before the show talked about the Peter Thiel paradox, and my Peter mm-hmm. Thiel paradox has been for a while, although it no longer works because people agree with me. Is Missouri ought to just set a little money aside and wait for the state of Illinois to eventually crumble, and then we should buy Cahokia Mounds, which I think is a national, you know, international treasure. And uh, do you think it will get to that point that the state of Illinois will be forced to sell off important parts of it? Will that ever sell off land itself? Well, so, so this is where it gets complex. And, and, you know, COVID, COVID, COVID changed the rules of the game for everything. All right. So here, here we had Illinois 
you know, the most, so the credit rating, first of all, was uh, by all three rating agencies, S&P, Moody's, and uh, Fitch, one notch above junk. Now, no state has ever been rated junk, ever. Um, uh, Detroit, of course, is a great example of something that became junk. And it was, you know, there's a bunch of notches of different ratings and, and Detroit became bankrupt and, uh, and, and junk rated. Well, Chicago Public Schools today is rated lower than Detroit. So it's at a lower level of junk than Detroit. The city of Chicago is already junk rated and the state by all three rating agencies is right at the verge of junk. So, so what happens, right? So we were already on a path to, to, to become junk rated and you know, there's, there's no sign from our politicians that they wanna do anything about reforms. Governor Pritzker says reform of pensions is a fantasy, that it will never happen, it'll never pass legal muster. So he ignores it. Um, we've got some Republican candidates that are ignoring pension reform for governor, Republican candidates for governor. They're saying, let's just grow our way out of it. And, and it, it, it's silly, it's silly. You can't grow your way out of a mess like this. Um, and so, so before COVID, there was a chance that things were gonna get so bad that either the government would be forced to do reforms or you just have chaos on the streets. And you know, you know, Milton Friedman always said, what you wanna do is force bad, you know, bad actors to do the right thing. And I think that the, the, the trajectory that Illinois, Illinois numbers were going and the out migration and all that was gonna force change. But then COVID came along and it really did expose how bad Illinois was. Um, right at the beginning of COVID, we had our state Senator uh, Don Harmon right off the bat asked for a $42 billion bailout from the federal government before there was even discussion of federal money coming to, to states. Uh, so he proved that. Uh, the Chicago uh, Mayor Lori Lightfoot, she asked Governor Pritzker, she said, Governor Pritzker, will you assume please all of Chicago's pension debts? We can't pay them down. And Governor Pritzker had to say no, because if, if we, the state, assume those, those pension debts, we'll become junk rated. So you could see that, that the ability to, to do anything about this problem is disappearing. But then, of course, all these federal aid packages came along and they have, in a way, bailed out, at least in the short term, uh, Illinois from having to, to fix its problems. And the latest package that just came through, the, the $1.9 trillion, will give Illinois about $25 billion in total across all governments. And so, you know, it's not enough money to make a difference, but it does buy the politicians two more years probably of, of time to kick the can. And so we're, we're trying to figure out where does Illinois go, go with all this money coming in? Uh, will, will, will people like uh, uh, President Biden and others then try to federalize Illinois debt? Will they try to keep trying to give it more and more money so that uh, the problem goes away? You know, the way we're printing money at the federal level means uh, perhaps they'll try to do that. So it's a, it's a confusing time for us in terms of how we handle Thanks for checking out this podcast short. If you like this interview, make sure you hit the like and subscribe button and hit that bell so you always get notified about this podcast. And if you're really interested in conversations like this, you may want to consider joining the Articulate Ventures Network. To find out more, go to network.articulate.ventures. <laughs>